All right then, my friends. So we have our form looking pretty good now. And we can enter in the name and how many sugars and alter the strength if we want to. And we can update. But then when we click update, the only thing that happens at the minute is we print those values that we're currently tracking in the form to the console. Now, I'd like to actually do something with those values, like save them to the Firestore user document. So whoever's logged in, take those values and update their document in Firestore with those values. That makes sense, right? So to do that, we can use a method that we've already created in the past inside the database service class. And that's this method right here, update user data. So this method takes in three parameters, the sugars, the name and the strength. And then it performs this action right here. It grabs the document with this UID and this UID is going to be determined by the user who's logged in their ID. So we make sure we grab their document. Then we use the set data method to set the data of that document using these three parameters. So all we really need to do is call this method down inside this function right here. So there's one problem with this and I'll show you that now I'm going to open up the debug console and this error, by the way, we will sort out in a minute. I'll show you that in a second. In fact, let's just do it now. I want to go to the brew list component right here and you see where we're getting the list of brews. Well, if those brews aren't loaded yet, then we're trying to output and cycle through those same brews dot length and then performing this function for each one. Well, if they don't exist at the very start, then that's not going to work. And that's what's causing this error. So what I'm going to do is provide a fallback option, which is just going to be an empty array save it and we're going to get rid of that error if we refresh now hopefully now in the future we won't get that error anyway so let's go back to the settings form and inside here i was going to show you the problem we currently have so let me open up the terminal again and go to the debug console and now if i go to settings and if i press update then notice we actually get null right here and we get null right here now this isn't really what we want. And we get this strange thing right here as well. Now, that's because we've not actually edited any of these things over here. So remember, when we first start and this widget first loads, we don't actually assign values to these. So when the form opens, the values are null to begin with. And if we don't edit anything, then it means when we update it, if we save these values, then we're going to be saving null values to the database. So we don't want to do that. We want to make sure that they have a value. And if they don't have a value, what we'll do is provide a fallback value. So we'll save that to the database instead. Now, what is that fallback value going to be? Well, we want it to be the current value that we pre-populate these things with. So whatever's in their user record at the minute. And we can grab that from this thing right here. So this can be the fallback option, userdata.strength.name and .sugars. So before we actually save anything, let's do a little bit of form validation because we do have a validator on one of these fields up here. We can see, is it this one? Um, yep, this validator right here to make sure a name has been entered so it can't be blank when we go to update it. So let's perform a little bit of validation first. We've seen how to do this in the past. We can take the form key that we created, then say dot current state to get the current state of the form and then use the method validate to do this. So if it's valid, it's going to evaluate this to true. And then we can do this save to the database thing. So we need to await this because it's going to take some time to do. And we need a database service instance. And in there, we want to pass in a UID, which is going to be equal to the user UID. Remember, we have access to that because we grabbed it up here using the provider in a previous tutorial. Where is it? Um, there it is, final user equals provider of user. And that's coming from the user stream. Remember, we set up in one of the earlier lessons. And now down here, we can access that user UID and pass it into this database service. So now we're creating an instance of that database service with that UID and we can use the method update data or user data rather. Now we need to pass in these three values right here, sugars, name and strength. Now remember, we need to provide a value if it exists that's these values right here that we use to track the input values and if they don't exist provide the fallbacks so the first one i've deleted all those so i'll have to go back to the database to find out what the first one is sugars 
name and strength. So sugars first, and we can pass in that by saying current sugars, question mark, question mark, because if this doesn't exist, we need to provide a fallback option, and that's gonna be user data dot sugars. So whatever the current value is, if we don't change it. The next one is name. So let's say current name. And by the way, I don't know whether I've mentioned this is called a null aware operator. And what it does is check if the first value has a value. And if it doesn't, if it's null, then it provides this value instead. Okay. So we're going to do the same thing here. And if it doesn't exist, we'll say user data dot name. And then finally strength. So user data, oops, not user data, current strength. And if it doesn't exist, then user data dot strength. All right, so now we've saved this to the database, we've updated their user record. And the only thing to do after this is to then shut this thing because it's not going to shut the bottom sheet automatically. Now to do that, all we have to do is say navigator dot pop context, and that is going to shut the bottom sheet for us. So we're waiting until this is done first of all, then we're shutting this bottom sheet. So let me save this now and try this out. I'm going to refresh over here and then I'm going to go to settings and this opens. I'm going to change my name. So I'll change it to Sean and then I'll go to the next form field. Sugars is going to be two sugars and then I'll change the strength to something in the middle. I'm going to update this now and notice it updates here in real time. That is freaking awesome. So what it's done here is it's sent this data to the database, to that Firestore collection, Bruise. It's found the record with this ID and it's updated those values. Now remember, we have an active stream inside this thing over here, brew list. Is it this one? No, it's the home. So right here, you see we have this stream provider, database service dot brews. So we have that stream set up with that collection. And when anything changes inside that collection, we get notified, right? And it sends a value back to our app. Now what we do is we turn that snapshot value back into a list of brews. So we have a new list of brews now when something changes. And that list of brews reflects what's currently in the Firestore collection, which is that newly updated brew as well. So then what we do is we recycle through those and we start to output the brew list again using that new list of brews with that updated data. So now this is kind of all working together really well. So what I could do is log out and then I'm gonna log in again as toad this time at the net ninja.co.uk. That was the other account I created before and test one, two, three, four, sign in. And once we've signed in, I'm gonna to go to settings and that's this crew member at the top now. I'm gonna change my name to Toad. So Toad, like so. And then I'm gonna move my sugars to four. He likes it sweet and it's gonna be a black coffee. Update this and now we can see at the top, Toad takes four sugars and this color. And by the way, the good thing is now, if I want to update them again in the future, I can do so, and they're pre-populated with these values. Now, even if I log out and then log back in, so toad at the net ninja.co.uk and test one, two, three, four, I'm gonna sign in. And because we did all of that stuff before with the user data, let me go to the settings form. Um, and show you this. Remember what we did is we did the stream builder over here. If I can find it, where is it? Okay, yeah, the stream builder right here. So we were listening for user data when a user logs in and we're getting their record. So because we get their record and we have the data on that record, such as their name, where we output it right here, or their sugars, where we output it right here, or their strength, we can access all that inside the form now so that it pre-populates it with those values. So that's really good, isn't it? And let me just make sure this works by changing it again and moving something down here, update, and yep, yeah, it updates in real time. So we're about 95% of the way there now. I wanna do one more thing, and that is to add a background image to this page and also add images over here for the coffee cup.